All right, this is Box with the Truth, and I am the Truth. It's uh, May 31st, 2015, and today we have with us four time former world champion Kalisha Wild Wild West. How are you doing today? Hey, I'm doing good. How are you? I'm good. I appreciate you taking time to do the interview. Oh, it's my pleasure. Thank you for considering me. Well, um, I want to talk about just a few little facts so some of the fans uh, can get to know you a little bit. Um, you are age 27, right? That's correct. You uh, fight at super bantamweight right now? 122, yeah. Okay, and your pro record is 16 wins, 2 losses, and 3 draws? Yep. And uh, you started your pro debut in 2006, correct? Yeah, that's correct. Are you still out in California? Oh, uh, I'm out in Moreno Valley. Okay, and I just want to make this known because I'm from I'm out here in Minnesota. That originally you are a Midwest girl. You are from Michigan, correct? Yeah, I was born in South Haven. My my dad and my mom were raised in Michigan. Okay, and you actually have a real impressive amateur record. A lot of females, um, they don't do a lot of amateur. They kind of get to pro as fast as they can. Your amateur record is 98 wins and 10 losses, right? That's correct. Yeah, it was mainly because I moved from 112 to 132. Wherever there were girls in all the tournaments, we'd move around just so I can get a fight. Okay, and like I just introduced you as a four-time former world champion, I want to explain that. You've actually um, defended the WBO bantamweight um, title three times. You did not lose it. Um, you had to give it up, and you also won the IFBA super bantamweight title and also had to give that up as well, correct? That's correct. Okay, so I just wanted to clarify that, that anybody thought that she actually lost, though she did not lose them in a fight. All right, so kind of take me back to the beginning. How did you get involved in boxing? When I was uh, younger, my dad, he, as soon as he retired, he started to train other fighters. He became a coach out here in Marina Valley. He's always traveling and had all the kids with him, and I, and I was around it. And I kept telling him, I want to box too. I want to be a part of the team. You know, that was all I saw growing up as a kid. And so when I was around nine, he, I, that was when I really started bugging him, and then when I was 10, he eventually let, him, let me start going to the gym with him. Okay, and just to clarify, he is your trainer now, right? He is. And he also was an amateur and a pro boxer. Uh, he was He was in the amateurs. I believe he started in amateur boxing when he was 18. He started a little later, and his career ended at around 27. As a pro, and he boxed in the Navy. Okay. Now, I just want to um, ask you real quick, because I've, I've read this a few different places, and I, I want to see how you feel about this. Basically, they uh, the boxing community claims that you're um, for women's right advocate for for women's boxing. Do you, do you take that title on? Do you consider that? I, I do, because uh, it was about... A year or two after I turned pro, so 2008, when I wrote an open letter to womensboxing.com, I was younger and I, I didn't know how to do it. I didn't know what to do, but I wrote an open letter when I realized all the discrimination in women's boxing and the differences and the inequality. And the answers that I would get, and the reason was because I was a woman in boxing. So I wrote an open letter that's about five pages long. It's, it's only available. I've only seen it still up on uh, one website, um, rightcrossboxing.com is where I found it not too long ago. And it was just me, you know, stating about my love for boxing, how there shouldn't be any differences, uh, gender shouldn't matter, I'm talented, I'm talented, it doesn't matter uh, it, whether or not I'm a woman. And... I was just basically demanding equal opportunities to media promoters, you know, people who would be involved in the boxing community to stop looking at gender and just start looking at skill and, and base, our, base our recognition solely on that. So from there, I, wrote a vi I also made a video, which was deleted, not on purpose, but it was deleted um, on YouTube. 
where I was not, I wasn't calling out Floyd Mayweather. Some people think I was calling out Floyd Mayweather. To clarify, I was, I was calling out uh, boxing promoters, and I used GMT promotions as an example. And I basically said, you know, you have all these fights, but where are the women? Put the women on the card, showcase them on TV. And, you know, I, I was just, you know, going on and on. And it, it got a lot of recognition uh, from Patrick, Patrick Ewing Jr., Lennox Lewis, Iron Mike Promotions, Mike Tyson rep replied, uh, Evander Hol uh, Holyfield, I'm sorry, not Evander Holyfield, Lennox Lewis, and uh, even a day NBC Dayline host, um, Kyle Turley from football, uh, Mr. Capone, is a, he's a, a well-known um, underground rapper. A lot of people saw the video and they retweeted it and they were like, I want to see this girl fight. You know, I don't even know much about her and I just want to see her fight. Okay, well, let, let, me ask, let me ask you something then. Now that Al Heyman and Greg Cohen and other guys are bringing this um, boxing back to national TV, back to the networks, and uh, actually just this past weekend, we've had two women fights on two different networks. Um, one actually, unfortunately, wasn't shown. It was on the honor card. But one of the Serrano sisters actually did make the TV. Um, do you think this is going to open more doors? Is, is this more acceptable to you that they're willing to start get, getting some of you guys on these shows and showcasing you guys? Definitely. I knew it was a, it was a process and it was going to take time. I, I didn't think or know if I would see it in my time, in my career. I didn't know. I didn't know if I'd be able to see it today. Um, but I knew it would happen because... Whenever, you know, you're out in the streets or if you're talking to anyone, not just boxing fans, but the regular people's perspectives, and you ask us about how do you feel about uh, women's boxing, 9 out of 10 says, that is cool. You know, 9 out of 10 people are, are intrigued and they want to see because they don't, they don't see it on TV, so they're just amazed that women can fight. With Ronda Rousey as a perfect example, UFC gave, them, gave her an opportunity. She's brilliant at her craft. She did it since she was in diapers. And when she, every time she fights, she's embraced, you know, a lot more than the, the head guys who've been pro and have a ton of fights. You know, she's, she hasn't had a whole lot of her record, but she's had attention as if she's been around the game for a lot longer as a, as a professional UFC fighter. Okay. So it was, oh, go ahead. It was, a, it was a break. It was a breakdown. You know, it was a barrier broken down. And it's just having that opportunity for women because there there have been fights uh, in boxing from women that were never showcased, never aired. People never saw it, and if they did, had they saw, it would be it would, it would just light up like a forest fire. It would be popular. People would embrace it, respect it, and change their whole perspective on women who fight because it's not two people slapping each other around in there. You're seeing really skillful women. No, and I agree with you, and that's and that's why I uh, personally, and I'll be the first to admit that I was not covering women boxing as much as I should either, and some other writers don't, and uh, that's why I dedicated the entire month of May to all strictly just female interviews because I want to help you guys get promoted more. I have seen a lot of women fights. Um, you guys fight just like the men. You guys just you work just as hard in the gyms. You guys deserve the same type of pay and promotion, and you guys need to be in main events on pay per view. Really. I appreciate you you doing that, and uh, it's 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 sad because um, for men, when a top pro makes it, they become a world cha a world champion. Everything changes their lifestyle, how they're treated, their sponsors. Everything opens doors because TV TV is an opportunity for them. When a woman w wins the world title, she goes back to her day job. She has to worry about how she's going to find a promoter to pay for the sanction fees, and at the same time, work and train on a regiment that's not that's not the same as your average person because they're on a world class level. So it's not just in the gym Monday through Friday. It's in the gym Monday through Sunday. It's making sure you're you're working extra hard, buying your own supplements if there's not a sponsor to help. It's it's sad that it's that way. You know, and every world champion, no matter what if they're a man or a woman, deserves air. When I fought at the Staples Center, um, and I won the WBL title in two thousand ten <clears throat> I was the only WBO title fight that night. Uh, Sergio Mora, Sugar Shane Mosley, and Saul Alvarez were on the card. 
none of them were had a world title fight. And uh, I not only did I not get any TV time, but didn't get much media either. And it wasn't like it was a long, boring fight. It was a spectacular knockout. And a lot of people saw it were, wow, that was a really good boxing up until the knockout it came out of nowhere, you know? So I know, I know I've know talked to, to Bob Aaron, Richard Schaefer, a lot of that promoters personally, and they're all scared. They've, they've said it in different ways, in different contexts, that they were scared to, to give women a chance to put them on cards. But when you have media and when you have the people and when you have the fans demanding it, it doesn't matter if they're scared, they're gonna have to do it eventually. When it comes to entertainment, it's about being in demand. You have to make yourself in demand. And I think with Ron especially, a lot of people have been putting women who fight in demand. So I see the change and I'm, and I knew about that fight on CBS with our other Hardy and and no Emmy and then uh, Amanda Serrano. And I, and I thought, well, finally, you know, finally, that's happening. And I'm glad that I got to see the day. Well, let me ask you something. I, has Al Hammond or Greg Cohen or any of them guys contacted you to possibly put you on one of these national shows that's coming up? No. We haven't been contacted by anyone. Um, we, we still get contacted by small promoters who don't televise and offer me a couple thousand bucks for 10 rounds, or we're contacted by, um, well, we don't, we don't get contacted, we reach out to Mexico, you know? So it's as if the only, the only opportunity for, for me is if I go to another country with all odds against me, or I fight on one of these small shows, and it's hard for me to really I sacrifice my day job for a couple thousand bucks. I'm kind of, I'm, I'm past that level. The next time I really plan on getting in the ring is, is when I see it really worth it, worth something, you know? I've already been there, done that since 2006. It's a okay. long time. Well, let me ask you something about, you, you brought up Mexico, and I wanted to ask you, because I've heard it from other females, and I, and I kind of wanted your opinion on this. Why is it when female boxers go over to Mexico and fight, they seem to get more respect, they get more promotion, and they get paid better. Why is that? Because in Mexico, Mexico is a country of boxing. They are the capital country of whatever you want, however you want to state it. They're, they're number one boxing fans, period. And when you have uh, people who embrace boxing in a general perspective, they're not blind to, to sex, to sexism. They're not blind to g gender um, differences. They're, they're looking at fighters who box, and not only are they admiring it, they're respecting it. So they're treating it in a way that's equal. And they have superstars, like Jackie Nava, Anna Marie Torres, Selena Munoz, uh, Mariana Warren. They have female superstars in Mexico who They've taken the time to promote, right? The promoters. And everyone out there watches it. And they love it. Because they're watching amazing boxing by a beautiful woman. And they don't care whether or not it's a man or a woman. Those women fight. They fight their hearts out. So because it's been so successful, the country embraces it. They keep promoting it. And it's really, really big. When I went out there, the, sh the few times that I have, it's, I, I, I don't even, I finally feel like a champion. Because when I did go out there, I was a champion. And they treated me like a champion. You know, it, was, it wasn't just the promoter, the security, and the team. It was the public and the people. I'm driving to go get something to eat. And I see a big poster, you know, on the freeway with me on it. I see vans with posters driving around advertising the flight, you know, paper, newspaper, with my face in it. That's how every world title fight should be, whether man or woman. And out here in America, it's such a greedy country sometimes, especially with boxing. People don't want to put that type of a dollar amount into a woman. 
because they don't think they're going to get their money back. But it's naive, and it's really just stupid. So let me ask you this, seeing that you've been there and you see how they actually promote women's boxing and boxing in general, what can the promoters here and the a boxing community as a whole take from Mexico and, and just in, in women's boxing and, and help promote it over here? They know what they have. They know already. Boxing promoters know. They already know it just, I mean, if, if you're a promoter in Southern California, you have Kalisha West, who's right around the corner. Not only do I have my family and my friends, a whole lot of fans down here. You promote me and advertise me, right? You're going to sell out your venue. Take uh, uh, Ava Knight and Linda Cooper out there in Vegas, for example. Any fight out there in Vegas, Mandalay Bay, MGM, you promote the girl, you put, you put her out there, you start put, putting her on billboards like she's supposed to be if she's fighting for any type of huge fight. She's going to reel in and pull in on her local fans. People are going to go just because she's from Vegas and they're going to want to support her. Oh, heck yeah, we have a, we have a world champion from our area, I'm, I'm there. It's boxing. So, and then it's a girl, a lot of people already have been fascinated with women who fight. But all these promoters are so old school. They should be embarrassed. It's almost like that kid who can't take off that played out pair of shoes from high school. You know, it's like grow up, change. They're, they're so stuck in their ways that it, it, it's like dumb. <laughs> no, no, I agree. It really, it, it's really dumb. I agree with and, you 100%. <laughs> I'm, I'm, I, you know, I don't... I, I mean, I respect I respect everyone for what they're good at. And if you're not good at your job, or if you're afraid to take risks, then I can't, I can't respect you. I can't respect you in a way where I can respect someone who has been successful in all avenues, men and women, promoting both. You know, and I like, I love boxing to death. I also like you and me. But I respect Dana White. You know, he was successful with men. He doubted the women. But he, he made a smart business move. He found a woman who everyone talked about. And he took a chance. These promoters hear about these elite women. They hear about it. Because the people who tell them have told me, Hey, Kalisha, just want to let you know I spoke to the head of TNT. And I told him you're out here and you're really good. They know about it. They hear about us the same way Dana did. They're just not taking the time to properly manage, promote, and market any of us. They're too busy making their money off of the net. All right. Well, on that note, I want to get back to, to you personally because uh, I totally agree with you 100% about these promoters. And uh, just by doing more and more interviews with the females, um, I'm finding out more stuff and, and learning more that... Like you said, these guys just don't want to take a risk. And it's been so many years since female boxing's been around, so it's getting a little ridiculous that, they, that they're that they just finally starting to take little risks when they should have been doing this years ago. Oh, yeah. If you have um, every t TV network that has uh, boxing fights in general, I'm, I'm saying I don't care if it's a small card, big card, smaller promoter, barefoot, I don't care. If, they, if it is mandatory, it should be mandatory that at least one female fight is on those cards, you're going to start hearing, oh, we want to see a women's fight. Where, where's the women's boxing? People are going to turn it to the channel just to see a female fighting on the card. I can guarantee it because we entertain. We fight. I we agree. have a lot to prove. I agree with you. All right, listen, I wanted to ask you a few uh, questions about you as far as, do you have any superstitions or rituals or habits that you do before a fight? No. I don't. I have um, discipline as, as far as tying and running, sparring. I don't do rituals. No I go to church. No habits or anything. No. Okay. Um. Do you have an activity outside of boxing that you love to do that has nothing to do with the sport? I love to fish. Okay. Mm hmm. I want to bring up two uh, female boxers' names. I'm just curious. Um, Ava Knight. Now, you fought her twice, and you lost her the first time, draw a second time. Is there any plans on a third fight? Me and Ava 
we tried um, to get that riled up years ago, about two years ago, because I wanted the third fight. She didn't care. She's just like, okay, we'll do the third fight. And we went on social media and, and told everyone, you know, who wants to see a trilogy? A lot of the boxing fans were like, yeah, we do. But we were really trying to get one of the big promoters to put that trilogy on their card. And we didn't get any bites. Okay. So I want to bring up yes. another... Oh, go ahead. There, there should be a trilogy, but it should be a trilogy the right way. And if you want to know what the right way looks like, go ahead and Google um, Anna Marie Torres and Jackie Nava in Mexico. Their fights were properly, properly um, promoted. Okay. So now I want to bring up another female boxer. I actually did an interview with her yesterday, and she basically called out anybody in her division above uh, a few weight, uh, one division above her or one division below her. She wants a fight. Nobody seems to want to fight her for whatever reason. She wants to get in the ring with anybody. So I told her I was interviewing you today, which you're a super bantamweight. She's a bantamweight. I asked her if I could bring up her name. She said, go ahead. I know who she is. So Selena Salazar. Are you familiar with her? My dad is familiar with her. Not well, me. Well, she's looking for a fight. <laughs> she's willing to fight anybody. And I personally think you two would put on one heck of a fight. You know, Selena Salazar sounds like me four years ago. <laughs> I'm, I'm willing to fight. I want to fight anybody. Somebody fight me. Blah, blah, blah. All right, that's fine and dandy, Selena Salazar. Get the promoter. Call us. Have it all together. And if it's worth it, we'll see. I don't mind getting down. There's nothing that stops me. I don't care who I fight either. Hey, hey, that's an honest answer. I just told her I'd throw the name out there and see what you had to say about it. So, I mean, hey, you were honest about it, like you just said. Get, right. you know. Uh, there's, no, there's no name out there that... There's no name out there that I'm dying or trying not to fight. I, I just started training again. And that's another thing, you know, because now that you mention it, her name was her name came up last year when I wasn't training at all. I think she call, I think it was uh, someone who called and tried to match us, but I wasn't training. So why would I take a fight if I'm not in the gym? Also with Marie Shea, she called trying to fight. I was in the gym. It's hard to keep. Us women who want to be successful in life in a gym when it's not successful for us. If it was successful for us, I would have been on TV defending my title when I fought, not in another country. You know, I love it. I love it all dearly, but I'm getting older. And every move that I make, it's not only, it can't always go by passion. It has to go by a business perspective. I'm not trying to be homeless. <sighs> No, that I'm, not makes... trying to be, I'm not trying to be without a job. No, that makes because sense. Because of boxing. You know, I have to make sure I have vacation lined up for me. I have to make sure I have paid time off for my day job. You know, I have to make sure that if the whatever the dates are, I can get those days off. I can get them covered. You know what I mean? Well, let me ask you this. You just last fought uh, last August, so do you have anything coming up this summer? Because I started training so actively, my dad, he was in charge of all that. I just tell him, I give him the green light, and I give him the green light. So before the year ends, I'm pretty sure. And this is more of a, it's a pride thing. I'm not going to, I'm not going to stop fighting after a loss. You know, I, I don't, I don't want, I don't like that as my last fight. So up to him if he finds something then yes he doesn't no okay so but I'm training again so you can let everyone know who's just training again <laughs> so you just put it out there yourself so they're all aware that you're training again so hopefully the phone will start ringing and if these girls really want to fight you uh, they'll have somebody call you there you go <laughs> sounds good um I just wanted to briefly touch on uh, this small thing because 
some fans might want to know what it's all about. I'm not really up on it myself. The CW reality show Capture, I know you were on there. Oh, yeah. What exactly? I did that reality what, show. What exactly is that show about? It was two teams of two. It was about um, 12, 12 teams living in the wilderness tr trying to survive with little food and having to capture one another during the hunt. The hunt lasted two hours a day, and it was down to the last team, but you get voted off. So if you get captured and another team gets captured by the hunters, then the village people will vote you off. So it's kind of like, uh, kind of like part, <laughs> kind of like yeah. part survivor in a way. <laughs> yeah, pretty much. Because they didn't really feed us. Okay. I lost a lot of weight on there too. I think I could go back down to bantam weight. <laughs> <laughs> so I want to also bring this up and, and see how you feel about this. And uh, you'll probably take it as a compliment uh, just based on what, I, what I've talked to you about so far. I read that, um, and just for the boxing fans that don't know who this person is because she was a while back, Billie Jean King was an, a women's rights advocate for tennis. You've been referred, you've been... Um, basically said that you are the Billie Jean King of boxing. I was told, I was called that. I was told that before. And how do you feel about that? I take it as a compliment. Because that's, for, you know, the best way I can put it is, I've accomplished a lot in this 19, well, how long has it been? Since I was 10 years old, 17 years, uh, 17 years in boxing, I've done a lot. I've traveled the world, I've won world titles. I've seen a lot, I've, I've faced a lot of the best contenders out there in other countries. And it's, it's already a per, personal fulfillment. Whether or not I, I have a, a Range Rover or a big mansion, it, it doesn't matter. That's just a price tag. Um, personally, I've accomplished a lot. And I'm, I'm satisfied and I'm happy with that. And now, I look at it in a different, in a different light. What can I do to change the way it is and make it different for someone who takes a similar route than me, as me. So in other words, if I'm going to defend my title versus my only loss, a girl in, in the future shouldn't have to fight for free. I fought for free, you understand? And it shouldn't be that way. I know it takes money to really make a significant change like there should be, and if and if down the road I financially can do something like that and invest, that's something I want to do. But everywhere I go, in every interview, no matter where I go, from here on out, I'm always going to mention the, the uh, inequality. I'm always going to demand better. And it should always be that way. For every female who flies, they should always do that. And I just advise everyone not to get stuck on themselves. Don't get stuck on your own attention. Don't get stuck on how famous or, or how well known you become. Look at it in a broad in a broader spectrum because that's legendary. That's future. That's that's something that's irreplaceable. You know, you can't if you can if you can cause a movement. That's something that you can it will be remembered years after you even pass. You know, and I, and, I, and I never really looked at it like that until I started getting older and I had someone who was somewhat of a mentor, also a supervisor at, at one of my jobs to me. And he said, you know, Kalisha, you're, you're doing something that you don't even realize is how important it is. And you won't realize it until you're older. And, and he, he told me how standing up fighting and believing something, something that you believe in and trying to make a change everywhere you go and how... And don't get me wrong, there's things that I've been working on that no one knows about, no one can know about. Because unless it's, unless it's, it begins, then everyone will know. You know, but behind the scenes, I'm doing things, hoping for that big break for women's boxing. It's not about Felicia, it's just about women's boxing. All right, well, with that, I'm going to end the interview. And uh, I just want to give you a chance to uh, say something to your supporters and your fans before we close the interview. I know every single one of them, I, every, every comment, every like that I get, I see it, I know, and I read it on my Facebook. I just, I just had, just opened a boxing Instagram. Um, I don't really use Twitter, I kind of want to delete it, but if, <laughs> but if, 
they do want to follow my next move and go on those social medias and and ask me any questions. So I love giving advice because I've always wished someone would, would have given me advice back then, you know, if, when I had questions. So thank you all for the support, and uh, hopefully soon you'll see me in the ring. All right, and with that, the truth has spoken.